Hello, I'm Kaelin. Uh, when I'm in this, this clothing, most people call me odd. Most people call me odd normally, but this happens to be an uh, authentic Viking name, which is one of the things we generally do to try and create and sell a character. Now, I started with Regular Angolorum about 14 years ago. Got into it because I was interested in the idea of, well, sword fighting. It seemed, seemed cool at the time, but over the time I've been in it, I've realised there is a lot more to reenactment than just running around with a sword. Don't get me wrong, it's a lot of fun, but it's just scratching the surface. Hello, my name's Louisa. Like Kerlin, I've been in regular about 14 years. Like Kerlin, I came for combat and stayed for the living history. And as he said, the combat's nice and it's fun, but oh, there's so much more. I love the textiles. I love the making, I love the doing. I love the finding out what's possible and what's tricky. I love the challenge. And, okay, yes, I like the chance to collect lots of rather disparate and interesting objects and get enthusiastic about them. <laughs> so, what we've done here, to a large extent, is got ourselves a bit of a trading display. Things that might be valuable, things that would be sought after, <laughs> things that would be traded from one place to another across the Viking world. Because you might know Vikings as raiders, and hopefully as traders as well, because that's that's being more known. But the great thing they did was the trading, was moving goods around, moving themselves around, discovering new places, at least to them, and finding out about the world. Now, as with the you know, as with the, the High Reeve you would obviously need a set of weighing scales because it's a valuable part of actually trading. Something you might use is fragments of silver. Now, the Vikings didn't use a lot in the way of coinage. They were a lot more into what's known as ring money, arm rings that you'd wear as your wallet. So you'd hack off lengths of silver corresponding to specific weights, and that would be weighed out on the scales. Perhaps a ring, for instance and then you'd weigh that against maybe twice its weight in beads, for instance. Or half its weight in silk. Because silk comes a long way and is very expensive. Yep. Well, when you're doing all of the calculating, it helps to be good at counting on your fingers. But for when you run out of fingers, and I'm not taking my shoes off to count, sorry, you run into the abacus. This makes big numbers a lot easier. Remember, at this point, the modern Arabic numerals that we use, they haven't got this far. That makes counting, and more importantly, doing calculations, a bit trickier. Try doing multiplication in Roman numerals and see how that goes. Links to that, and something else you'd also need, is something along the lines of a wax board, just for keeping tally. You can use something like this, a cloak fin, to just tally tally things up and just keep track of what you sold. We don't have an example out here at the moment because the wind has a nasty habit of blowing it away, but it's also possible to scratch on birch bark with a piece of charred twig. Unfortunately, as I said, that has a nasty habit of blowing away and you need something a little heavier and more permanent for your permanent records. However, for doing calculations, scratch scratch. Course. While you're waiting for people to actually come along and trade, you do need to keep yourself entertained. Some bone dice, perhaps, for playing various dice based games. Everything from plain old dice through to a game called Tabula, which is akin to Batgammon. Or maybe you'd play Tafel. And one of our current trade goods is a rather lovely king piece from the Tafel board, and that's a copy of one found near Lindisfarne. As well as the, the glass beads, you've also got trade goods, and these were found throughout the Viking world to an extent. They're uh, sharpening stones, particularly beautiful banded stone. Um, I believe they're quite common, they're found in Iceland, and you just use it to hone your knife, keep it nice and sharp because a blunt knife is no use to anyone. 
Okay, there are man mansions, glass beads, which I do indeed have a few on display here, and a piece of amber that shows up from the Baltic, and people will trade you good silk, good silver for their amber, all the way down to the Mediterranean and Miklagard. We call it Constantinople or Istanbul now. And well, I like a few beads myself. My darling has to make sure I'm well supplied with all manner of shiny things. After all, it makes him look good if I look good too. Yeah, no, another another very common trade good that was sold, it's in fact called the grey trade, the brown trade, was the trade in furs, in animal pelts. You've got a selection of those here. Now we've got a beaver pelt. This one's actually a seal. There's good eating on those. Speaking of eating, you've also got, unfortunately the lamb didn't quite make it. And we don't do waste. This calf sadly didn't make it either, but it did make a good dinner. And thankfully he wasn't silly enough to go hunting this himself, because boar are dangerous. But you can feed an entire ship's crew on one if you know what you're doing. But where the money really lies is in taking these pelts that, well, are just common animals to us. But if you take those down to Miklagard, these are exotic luxury goods. And once again, they'll pay good silver for that. Or better yet, silk. This is literally worth its weight in gold. Silk comes from far, far beyond Miklagard, along what's still known today as the Silk Road. And as you can imagine, having travelled such a distance, it was horrifically expensive. There are scraps of silk from all over the Viking world. Most of them have been cut very, very thin indeed and applied as trim on clothing. One of the largest extant pieces of silk is actually a cap found at Coppergate in York. This is a copy of it. There was an almost identical one found in Dublin and the two fabrics are so close they may actually have been cut from the same bolt of silk. We've also got some silk threads. Silk is a wonderful material. It takes dye very, very well. It keeps that colour and it's wonderfully, wonderfully soft and shiny. You can tell I'm a bit of a fan. The final thing, or well, the final few things that you might sell is stuff like lapis lazuli. Again, incredibly expensive. You can die with this. You can make beads out of it. But again, like silk, it is worth its weight in gold, very nearly. We do have some few bits of coin from trading that, that you would find from trading down in England. There is one other commonly traded good that we do not have any examples of here, uh, but it does bear mentioning that they were often a slave trading people. Humans had value. This is not the first time in history and it certainly wasn't the last. The slave markets particularly well known in places like Dublin or once again Miklagard. You could buy or sell pretty much anything or anyone in Miklagard. Thankfully, not something we do now.